We've got some breaking news on the sordid tale of Georgia DA Fonnie Willis and her star-crossed lover, Nathan Wade. Now, Wade just testified that he paid for vacations he took with Willis using his, quote, business credit card and then was reimbursed by her in cash. Take a look. All I needed. Um, you said in the affidavit that you roughly shared travel, though, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this roughly sharing travel, you're saying she reimbursed you? She did. And where did you deposit the money she reimbursed you? It was cash. She didn't, she didn't give me any checks. So she paid you cash for her share of all these vacations? Mr. Schaefer, you'll step out if you do that again. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so all of the vacations that she took, she paid you cash for? Yes, ma'am. And you purchased all of these vacations on your business credit card, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you included those in deductions on your taxes, correct? No, ma'am. No, you did not. Now, in an additional hit to Willis and Wade's story, a former Fulton County DA employee and personal friend of Willis since college testified that Willis had definitely been in a relationship with Wade since 2019, which directly contradicts filings in which the pair claimed their relationship began in 2022. Woof. Very bad. So we all know that, you know, uh, I, I, was, I paid for this on my credit card, but then I was reimbursed in cash is a very convenient and implausible excuse. Right, there's there's two um, things there. What One is, it's difficult to trace, so you can't really verify right. that she did reimburse you, therefore it stands that it's possible to play, uh, you know, a corruption scheme. Or two, there's still something nefarious about the idea that you would need to be reimbursed right. in cash. It seems like not insignificant amounts of money, and it seems cash, very not informal. Venmo, not it, exactly. It's, Completely. It's just not. Yeah. Pl that's not unmarked, how people operate. Unmarked bills. I, I can't and a tell paper you the last time I even touched a dollar. To yeah. be honest <laughs> with you, like so. Th there's that aspect of it. Then being fully caught in a lie by your own friend. Now I'm sure there's going to be more out about the nature of their friendship. Maybe she's a former friend, a fake friend, like friends of mine. Mm -hmm. I don't care. They, they would, I would hope they would protect me even if I were lying. <laughs> so who knows what's going on in that relationship. But you have someone who has knowledge of you intimately, shall we say, who's come forward and said you were dating that man prior to the time that you hired him in direct contradiction of your previous testimony. Her credibility is completely Yeah, shocked. it's just clear there's no reason to give them the benefit of the doubt at this point. They're not they're not trustworthy, they're not believable. It seems very clear they had a relationship. I mean, like the most straightforward explanation, Occam's razor, they were dating, she decided to pick him for this job and hired him, and then they went on a bunch of trips that he paid for, you know, using the, I mean, not specifically using these funds, but money is fungible, paid for trips while being her employee, while being in a relationship. That all seems like how, and then, yep. yeah, she paid him back in cash. I tend to remember, doubt it. This isn't this isn't like a uh, Cori Bush situation where her husband works in security. She hires him as security. Remember, part of the contention here is that, is that he is unqualified. not qualified. This is not yeah. an area of the law that he normally practices. He doesn't know anything about what's going on. I mean, he's a lawyer. He's qualified to do other yeah. kind of legal work, but not this specific Well, it's not that work. important of a case. It will only determine whether <laughs> the potential next president of the United States goes to prison. <laughs> I mean, like, I, honestly, like, this is, I have period interest in this. This is, like, a wild scandal. It's starting to, it's like popcorn. Right. But I, I just, I thing. keep coming back to, like, I don't blame anybody for being interested in this. But also, what are the Democrats doing? They should have seen this coming from a mile away. When these accusations first came out, what, like, months ago now, they should have said, hey, Bonnie, what's the deal? What's the truth? We can get past this. I'm not going to be mad at you. You've had a very high salary yeah. for a period of time doing this case. You, good for you. But we're going to move you out now because the stakes of this are just too high to let us go down and some ta let it all go down in some tabloid fever dream. And I don't know if Fonnie Willis is making it difficult for people to shuffle her off and, uh, to the sidelines and hire new counsel. I don't know if there's some other kind of a sticking point here where it is. Difficult to find someone who's up to date on the case enough to replace her. Although I would still argue, if you are a professional baseball team, you have a replacement hitter for the when the, fir when the, when the first pitcher gets tired, you have someone else come in. If you are in any other context with very high stakes, you have a backup. A president has mm -hmm. a VP. There are backups built in the system. She is not a one-woman legal team litigating this case. And no one's really defending her, by the way. I saw uh, Vacha Angar Sargon, our former co-host. 
I'm mentioning that she's watching MSNBC, I think, currently, and they're just all tearing Fonnie Willis apart. There's no one, no one is out there saying, oh, yeah, this is a witch hunt and this is unfair. It's just very clear this was unethical behavior that deserves scrutiny, that he wasn't qualified in the first place. And now we, we you know, even if it was all above board, he was not necessarily the best choice for it. It's clearly not all above board. Um, this is in addition to accusations to complaints of um, drama in their workplace. Uh, multiple whistleblowers want to come forward to speak to um, ethics issues totally unrelated to her romantic life, um, having involving how public funds were allocated and her awareness of that, potentially retaliating against a whistleblower who brought that attention, uh, brought that issue to the public's attention. So um, it's very bad. Now, you said no one's defending her. I will say, Fadi Willis certainly has defending herself. Yeah. Using, I gotta say, what's a pretty gross version of a race card, saying that she is being targeted because she's a black woman and all of these kinds of things. I'm sorry, miss. The woman that you allegedly that came to you as a whistleblower who lost her employment after, I don't know the circumstances of that, but she lost her employment after she came to you as a whistleblower, was also a black woman. And the idea that you're gonna try to use your race and gender as a shield against bad behavior that might have also negatively affected other black people and women in your office place, and frankly, around the country, if you're reading this as Democrats are reading this, as a case that has democracy itself resting on its shoulders. It's not just about you. It's about millions of people who also happen to have your skin color and your gender identity, uh, yeah. who are much more vulnerable than you are, frankly, because they're not people who have these $600,000 salaries to litigate cases at an extremely high level. Yeah, so gross to get in front of people in in that black church and Oof. do exactly what you said, make it all about identity politics and how she's being persecuted as a black woman. Um, really gross example of that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, there, there's actually, I mean, there's a lot of left um, analysis and discourse, by the way, about identity poli politics that specifically talks about how um, uh, they, they call it the PMC, um, the professional managerial class. Yeah. Uh, high, high income earning, upper middle class and wealthy minorities have really hijacked the d discourse around race and privilege and those kinds of things to make it all about basically their HR foibles. Oh, am I going to get to be a partner at the law firm because I'm black or whatever it is or because I'm a woman? Mm -hmm. And how that has done such a disservice to the core concerns of these demographic groups that overwhelmingly feel that economics are their chief concern and how that's really hijacked the political discourse and the whole orientation of the Democratic Party to say we're going to do things like make Juneteenth a holiday instead of doing substantive reforms that actually make the, the working class base of this country, which is disproportionately black and brown and female actually have more economic parity and equality in the United States of America. Paint little rainbows on the bombs we're going to exactly. drop, that kind of thing. Exactly. So, you know, it's very disappointing to see this as a leftist. It's disappointing to see this as someone who does think that there's actually a strong legal claim against Donald Trump, in this case in particular, and who is frustrated by this sideshow. What else is there to call it? I call it entertainment. <laughs> we will continue to follow it. Uh, I'm sure there will be more developments. We will cover them here at Rising. Thank you for joining us, and we'll have more of our show in just a minute.